and welcome to another edition of Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham, where Team Needham discusses everything healthcare. I am your host, Sean Needham, and I am streaming live from the Mosley Professional Pharmacy Podcast Studio, and I am super excited to have William Martino on our show today. He's going to be discussing meditation. Um, there are many different modalities to help us help our health. And we talk about them all the time. And, and we, we focus on diet. We focus on exercise. We focus on sleep. Um, and there's many other things in between there. Um, medita- meditation is one of those. So I'm super excited to learn myself um, on this subject. And William, welcome to our show. Hi there. Thank you for having me on. Let's have some fun. Yeah. So give us a little bit about your history and how you ended up on this podcast. Well, um, originally from suburbia in Philadelphia, uh, uber wealthy family, all kinds of PhDs and all kinds of millions. And um, I was interested in the chi. And uh, is there any reality to all this mysticism and spirituality? So after the school of hard knocks, being lost in life, which is typical to this kind of a story. Then I became a Zen monk. Uh, I was the head of security for the guru of the Beatles after the Beatles time, of course, in 2000. Oh, wow, wow. And all kinds of other experiences and found my way to teaching other people how to influence their systems measurably. In other words, brain waves, hormones, breathing pattern, and so forth. That's the right. skinny so, of it. Yeah. So how long have you been doing um, this specifically? Since 2000. And I have okay. people all over the world. Just this morning, I talked to and taught Netherlands, Hungary, India, Bangladesh, Italy, London. That's today. So I teach people all over the world in groups and in individuals to create measurable results in, in uh, how they feel. Same thing you're doing. Uh, they're complementary. You know, external and external both. I mean, can you can you calm down and can you eat right? Both are important. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about meditation. It's a funny thing you have as the topic, discussing meditation. Kind of a oxymoron. But we can do that. Uh, words to point to it. But when you uh, have a wonderful moment, then all those systems change in measurable ways. So meditation, according to its cultural heritage, according to uh, the individual personality, uh, religion, uh, techniques, mindfulness, Vipassana, so forth, they all come at meditation in different ways. But the bottom line is, can you change those values? Can you change your hormones? Can you change your breathing? But I mean, if you took a blood test now and we have the most fun in the next hour, your blood chemistry changes. If uh, you win the lottery, your brain waves change. Yeah. All kinds of different external events. And we're often trying to manage our insides by the outside. And I would propose that we do it the other way around. Instead of doing better to feel better, feel better by choice, through quieting the mind and so forth. Um, And then, you know, if you have drive, you're going to sleep better. You're going to do better. You're going to behave better. Things are going to be better. So feeling better is really the source, just like emotion is really the source. So when it comes to meditation, it's a very personalized, careful thing according to the individual. And that's what I do for people. I customize a way that you can create those measurable results. So when I think of meditation, um, I always think of meditation to, to calm us down, but you are saying that might not be always the case. Am I getting that? Oh Lord, no, God, no. So give us some examples of when you would. Sure. You go to Harvard and you look at the scientific studies of the most advanced meditators in the world. And first you calm down. Then after you calm down and you get a good night's rest, for example, same thing as meditation. Meditation is conscious sleeping. Once you calm down, then you're a dynamo. You're a powerhouse. You're not, you're not uh, dissociative. You're not religious uh, grandiosity. You're not new age plastic shaman. You are in fact uh, in the zone and outside the box. So you're going to get more done in less time. So the brain's 
of people that are advanced meditators are hardwired in more gamma. That's a scientific fact. So you have a quicker internal energy from advanced meditation, but that comes from the opposite, which is basically your ability to calm down, your ability to relax on the surface of it. Ah, that's interesting. So meditation is, you said, is literally conscious sleeping. That's right. And so in order to properly meditate, you will be sleeping? Yes, but you're awake. <laughs> and you're, oh, okay. and you're, okay. you're conscious okay. of your sleep state. When you first start to go to sleep at night, you experience that twilight sleep. And that, when peace of mind has saturated your discursive thought is meditation. Most of the time, for most people, when you begin to have that experience, it's too much to handle. You go off into dreams. Meditation is being conscious of all those processes rather than being unconscious of it. And and give us some examples of when meditation would help somebody. I, I get it probably everybody if it's like sleep, but give us some specific examples um, of where you've had some great results with people. Well, I'll speak from my own experience first. And then uh, after that, I, I'll talk about uh, a few people that had extraordinary results. But for myself, before I became the uh, head of security for the Guru of the Beatles after the Beatles time, <laughs> uh, I wore glasses. And I had lost the glasses. And then I'm now in this ashram kind of a thing. And I had been a Zen monk before that. And this is the opposite of a Zen monk. This is, hey, it's easy. Relax. Take it easy. You know, Zen is you don't pay attention. I'm going to hit you. You know, <laughs> so okay. two opposites of things. And and uh, so I left there and I started to teach. And I said, let's go get the glasses again. It wasn't a big prescription, 2070, but borderline for driving and I could see boards and classrooms better. And so let's go get the glasses. So I went to go get the glasses. They said, hey, your vision's 2020. And what? Okay. So didn't get the glasses. Fast forward, uh, let's see, 2000, 2014, 14 years. And I had to retake the driver's license exam and I couldn't pass the eye exam. So I said, well, I'm not playing around with heal my eyes. I'm going to go get glasses. So I went to go get glasses. And I asked the ophthalmologist, I said, is there anything to this heal your eyes stuff? Knowing that I already did it once. And he said, no, it's all pseudoscience. Two weeks later, I passed the eye exam without the glasses that I got from the prescription that day. Basically, rest your eyes, you know. Did you ever try to read something and say, oh, my God, I have to read this. I'm trying to put this thing together. Let me let me just stop. Let me pause and relax my eyes and go back to it. And then all of a sudden you can read it. So it's the same process. You just extrapolate on on that discipline a little bit and you could heal your eyes. Interesting. So give us some more uh, uh, examples of, of where meditation has really helped somebody. Well, the other ones are a bit a bit extreme, so I'm reluctant to give you the full Monty on them because they're just unbelievable. But I'll give you I'll give you an outline of it. So, I did a uh, workshop series for nurses and doctors at a major hospital, and that was because this woman's cancer went into remission, and she took me in to talk to the doctor, and the doctor was placating. And she literally yelled at the top of her lungs, you listen to him. So that's one example. Uh, but there's a lot of examples. So I don't want to go into the other examples because it's, it's, I think it's too much. But it's, things like that have happened. People have experienced profound healing. There are a number of them. It's part of your life as well. I noticed that you concoct pharmaceutical solutions for people, yes. which I think is genius. I think it's great. I'm all for that. I'm not, you know, meditate and don't take medicine. That's not me. You need the medicine, you take the medicine, but let's meditate too. But when I found out in researching you that you do that, I thought, oh my God, that, that's pure brilliance. So I'm sure, 100% sure 
that people have had extraordinary healings because of your ability to address them individually. And I'm sure also that you look at their personality, you look at their emotion, you look at all kinds of stuff, I would guess. Then, of course, you look at the, the data of the particular things that they need, and then you understand so much about these pharmaceuticals that you can mix and match it a little bit, which, of course, is how all pharmacists should be run. So, um, yeah, so it, it, extraordinary healings, as you know, they happen unquestionably. So I think that's the first thing we could give to people is to understand that that happens. Absolutely. And, and, you know, I think the thing is, William, is that, and I tell people this all the time, whether it be with diet, nutrition, exercise, um, hormones, if we give our body the right input, our body has an amazing ability to heal itself. And you're talking about meditation. I, I don't know that much about meditation um, other than you know, that, that it's relaxing. And now you tell me it's a lot like sleep. Well, I will tell you what I tell people all the time is that sleep trumps everything. Yeah. Um, most people think, oh, to be healthy, I've got to exercise. They think exercise. Did you say Trump? Oh, no. Well, no. <laughs> um, they think exercise is the most important. Most people think that. And that is absolutely not true. Exercise is probably the least important. Oh, uh, the most important I can is relax sleep. now. Yeah. Yeah. The most important is sleep because if you no amount of exercise will help you at all, you will not adapt to that exercise unless you sleep. You don't get stronger when you exercise, you get stronger when you sleep. Oh. And it's the same thing about eating. Eating is second most important behind sleep, more important than exercise. If you're not eating right, you're not going to, you know, no matter how much you're exercising, you cannot exercise your way out of a bad diet. So, you know, I could see how meditation can be, you know, help in overall healing process and overall health because of what I know about sleep. Yeah, just 10 seconds, you know. So sleep is, that all produce... it, is that all it takes? You <laughs> well, you know, after somebody was studying with me for um, maybe it was a few years, they said, we're doing the 10 seconds and we're doing a few of the five minutes, you know, but you're complaining about not as much results. And I said, do you think you did you? believe me on that <laughs> you're kidding right but listen one moment can change everything so that's the idea of the 10 seconds so if everybody just does 10 seconds every time they're getting in a car or every time they sit down when coming home 10 seconds lengthen your breath that becomes cumulative benefits so that produces the ability to sleep better which produces innervation i guess you're familiar with the word innervation Medical term meaning bi biomagnetism going to the nerves. The heart has a 40-foot field of measurable magnetism. The heart, the most advanced way to diagnose a heart in a hospital is called the magnetocardiograph. Just like Star Trek, they measure the heart field of energy. And from that, they can diagnose what's going on with the heart. So every cell in the body has north and south pole of magnetism. So the vibe and the chi and the prana and all this uh, fantasy stuff has been proven to be scientific reality since like 1920. So what I'm getting at is that when you sleep better, then you have more innervation. That means more electromagnetism is going along the nerve cells and the structure of the cords of the spinal column and the nerves. You have more energy. If you don't sleep better and you don't get that, how are you going to fuel your digestion? So if you fuel your digestion with that, then you're going to be hungry and then you're going to, you know, get rid of a whole kinds of problems. And then if they can get a little help from some medicine, if needed, all of this works together. But I agree with you. You, you got to be able to rest your mind, basically. So you, you say you um, do this to groups of people. What's the average mm -hmm. group of people that reach out to you? Why do they reach out to you? Well, I do it for businesses. I do it for groups that I cultivate. I have a thing called the seven sessions and they reach out to me because they've been into these different mindfulness meditation and the yoga school and Qigong and or maybe trauma and they can't get any results in any of those things like they want, but they know it's real somewhere. Uh, and I tell them, look, let's go. I'll prove it to you that it's real. 
uh, meaning wisdom. that you, you, meditation's real, wisdom is real. You can find out what works for you as an individual. So you mentioned, did you say seven steps? Seven sessions I have. And oh, there seven are seven steps. steps in those seven sessions. That's I the see. group class. You want to go through the seven steps? Yeah, let's do that. If you don't mind. Okay. Um, step one is where don't I understand? Where don't I understand that Sean is teaching me and I'm not listening that well? How am I not receptive? And I'm just a mass. I'm sorry. Person. I'm sorry. Will you, will you repeat that? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I had to throw that in there. Thank you. I love that. Yeah, I <laughs> think the main sarcasm in there. I got it. I almost didn't get it. Almost I know, you were too serious. That'd have been bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Keep going. Sorry. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, it's it's a, a very active world we live in i mean you've probably watched the news before very interesting world yeah and so it's very difficult to feel safe enough to extend the attention span very difficult because yeah. if we don't keep the other person out and under control you know we could get in trouble so it's it's very challenging to recognize that life is functioning through uh, everybody everywhere and and to have the humility to recognize that mommy, daddy, sister, brother, wife, husband, so forth, they have integrity, they have worth, no matter who and what they are. And we've got to be receptive to them. That's how the other person gets healed. They come to you and they say, oh, I have this digestion. That's the number one thing in, uh, in doctor's offices, right? Is it the same for pharmacists? I have this digestion thing. And I wonder if you can help. And you go, well, you know how... You're drinking some water, you know, you're receptive. Yeah, right. And you get the idea from them with their variables. And then you go, okay, I have some help for you. So really all of life is trying to do that all the time. All the religions say that, like the Tao is functioning behind the scenes of environment. You have to stop me if I get too deep because I'm a way out dude, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, so first step. Since you were security for the Beatles after the Beatles, you were probably way out there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't that a great credit? I hate to have to explain it after the Beatles time. So to uh, recognize that we're not receptive in certain areas of our biological biography. It can be our head. It can be our stomach. It can be somewhere. You can feel inside your body where you're kind of trying to keep everybody out and under control. And that means you're keeping life out. Okay, so... In step one, you recognize, oh, I'm not able to sleep that well. Oh, I don't have that great digestion. Out of the problem with everybody, ask any addict professional or mental health professional, is denial. Yeah. They don't want to say, I need some help. Right. Okay, so this is the state of mind for us human beings. Step one is drop the defense mechanisms and become receptive. And there's a lot and how to do that and how to explain how to do that, you know, for another time, maybe. Step two is slow down. If somebody has a serious problem, whether it's mind or body, a super serious, they go into coma. Super slow rhythms is the deepest repair mode of the body. A master of any art will pause before delivery. Look at the Olympian. Look at the great podcast host. Okay, we're on. You pause first. You, you meditate first, you know. Right. So step two is create those long rhythms. Slow it down. And step three. <laughs> I did that on purpose. <laughs> There's the pause. Purpose. <laughs> yeah, right. Step three is the pause. Step three is the transcendence. When you have the breathtaking beauty moment. If you have one moment that's amazing... Everything changes, click, 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 hormones, breathing pattern, pulse, brain chemistry, body chemistry, physiology, attitude, demeanor, tonality, everything in one moment. So in the third step, that's the experience that they call in yoga is called samadhi. Uh, in normal language, it's called breathtaking beauty. 
in uh, Qigong, it's called embryonic breathing. In Tibetan Buddhism, it's called Rigpa. You know, it goes on and on. Science, I think, is the last religion. So to talk about it in ordinary ways is very important. And it just means you're in a wonderful scene of nature, in nature. And it's so nourishing that the water and the trees and whatever's going on creates for you this profound relief. You go to the vacation place and you put the bags on the bed and you say, ah, well, why couldn't you do that every morning for your whole life? When you come back from that experience of step three, we'll call it transcendence, you have power and you land. You become very solid in your own skin. That's step four, rooting. So this models what happens when a person's being healed. You could, you could see all these changes when somebody gets the right medication. You know, first they have this discharge of stuff because they drop their defense mechanisms and they're hoping it works. Second, they're slowing down and they're feeling some relief because the medication's working. Third, they really feel relief and they go, oh my God, thank goodness for Dr. Sean or however you call it. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if you're a doctor, but no, I'm not. Okay. Well, I'll call you Dr. Sean. If that's I'm a okay. pharmacist. <laughs> well, very similar, better. So you go beyond. And this step three, when it's working, you say, thank goodness. People call me. I don't know. This guy a couple of weeks ago started calling me Dr. William. That's probably where it came from. <laughs> Why are you calling me Dr. William? All right. Step four, you come back from it and you ground yourself. You're rooting. Okay. Because the medication or the meditation worked and you feel like you're solid and safe in your own skin. Okay. You got a new hope because the thing's working. Step five is blooming. Blooming means you start to open up. You talk to people better again because you're feeling better. You start to see new possibilities. You, you know, open the windows on the first day of spring kind of thing. Step six is pre-processing. Pre-processing means that now you're in this meditative place. Let's say you're in the vacation destination. You start to think about whatever's going on in your life, your business, your relationships from a from like on the mountaintop kind of thing. So this third eye open type of reality starts to happen to you because you're in the zone now. You feel better. Step seven is I call it sweep the floor. It means you just go to work. Just do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. It's not much thought about it. Got a podcast at one or I think it's 11 your time or a 12. And then um, you do it. There's The thinking gets in the way at that point. So how long does it usually, you said that this can be in 10 seconds. You can do all those steps in 10 seconds. Is that, am I correct? That's the, that's the master skill. That's the master skill. So you the Einstein, the anybody that's a genius at what they do. You've done this for a long time. I come to you with a particular bodily ailment. You've got a lot of factors that are synthesized inside of 10 seconds. We'll say, and you come out with the solution. So the better that you practice the experience of your own education about your own self to reverse the search in your life, the more that you have speed of processing going on to deal with creating the result you want, which is feeling better and doing better in life. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, well, thank you for sharing that with us, William. As we wrap this podcast up, I want you to tell our listeners and viewers what you have a passion for. Healing. Healing myself, healing others, evolving. You know, the only people that survive in life are those who self-reinvent. So I try to have a clean slate and a fresh start and a new lease repeatedly every day and do it better. My passion is for uh, life. That's awesome. So we're going to stream your website there. Julie, go ahead and stream his website. And tell us a little bit about your website, and if people have questions or want to get a hold of you, what's the best way to do that? To connect with me, you can do it through all the buttons that are on there, uh, the WhatsApp and the Messenger and so forth. If not, I have a secretary that will get to me. But uh, all you have to do is to just realize that if there are, in fact, moments that change your attitude, your mood, your demeanor that have happened in your life before, 
then you can choose to actualize those moments. You can choose to have peace of mind rather than thought just for a few minutes now and then in your life. And in doing so, you can change your life in extraordinary ways, personally, socially, and financially. I teach people individually. I teach in groups. I do special presentations, lots of free videos and all these things. I have 14 books. They're all free on my website. Uh, reach out, connect with either a certified flow instructor, I call it, or myself, and do the training. Start with 10 seconds where you can actually measure the change of how you feel. That'll result in having more power to really make the choices, such as getting the help that you need or changing your finances. It's all possible. When, when you are lit up, in a sense, or when you feel really good, let's say you fall in love. I'm not too long-winded here. But let's yeah. say you fall in love and and you have all of these changes. Right after that, you feel you can do anything. That's the honeymoon effect. Don't change that. Get that again. And I can show you how to create changes in your life from the inside out. I love it. I love how you talk about the individuality, and the, I, we're all about that at um, our Health Solutions podcast. Our goal is to educate and empower individuals to take charge of their own health. And this is definitely a modality to help do that. So William, thank you for your expertise and knowledge today. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Sean. Pleasure. And listeners and viewers, thank you for tuning in to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Tune in to our midweek podcast Wednesday, 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you for tuning in to Health Solutions with Sean and Janet Needham. Thank you. 